The purpose of the surgical scrub is to reduce the number of microorganisms on the skin to an absolute or irreducible minimum. Before beginning the surgical scrub, you must first don proper personal protective equipment. All surgical team members who scrub in must wear a mask and protective eyewear or face shields during all procedures and whenever there is a risk that blood, body fluids, or particles of tissue can splash on the face. The mask is worn to protect the intraoperative environment from contamination by aerosol droplets generated by the mouth, oropharynx, nose, and nasopharynx. When used properly, masks block droplets and filter air. Masks should be worn at all times by all surgical personnel in restricted areas and in locations where sterile instruments and supplies are stored or processed. To protect the patient or the wearer, masks must be worn properly. Be sure to cover both the nose and the mouth. The ties must be secured at the crown of the head and around the neck. And never wear masks around the neck with the ties dangling. Once your mask is in place, be sure to put on your protective eyewear. Before beginning the surgical scrub, the surgical technologist or scrub nurse opens the sterile gown, towel, and gloves onto a small table on which no other sterile supplies have been opened. Sterile members of the surgical team perform the surgical scrub immediately before donning sterile gown and gloves. Some institutions use a timed scrub or counted stroke method. In this case, a three-minute scrub is effective. However, the length of time for the surgical scrub is an individual institutional policy. The surgical scrub is performed with a disposable sterile scrub sponge and brush. The scrub brush is impregnated with antiseptic and pre-wrapped. If the scrub brush is not impregnated with antiseptic solution, the various solutions will be available at the scrub sink to add to the brush. To perform a surgical scrub, first, make sure that the scrub suit top is tucked into the scrub pants or is sufficiently snug so that it remains dry. Remember to adjust the surgical mask and protective face shield or eyewear before starting the scrub. Perform routine washing of hands and arms using antiseptic soap. Rinse hands and arms thoroughly. Unwrap a sterile scrub brush packet and remove the nail cleaner. Hold the brush in one hand while carefully cleaning the subungual area on each finger under running water. Discard the nail cleaner. Moisten the sponge with water or antiseptic soap and water, create lather, and begin with the nails. Keep the surfaces of the fingers, hands, and arms in mind as you begin the scrub. If using the counted method, Scrub the nails with 30 strokes. Scrub each side of each finger and the hand separately. Each finger has four sides. Scrub each side individually, first on one hand and then on the other.
Proceed to the arm, 20 strokes on each of four surfaces, and then the other without returning to previously scrubbed areas. Extend the scrub to two inches above the elbow. Do not allow the scrubbed hand or arm to contact any part of the sink, faucet, or scrub suit. Avoid splashing water onto the scrub suit. Donning a sterile gown over a wet scrub suit is not acceptable because of the danger of strike-through contamination. Keep hands higher than elbows at all times. When the scrub is completed, rinse the hands and arms by first passing the hand and then the arm under running water. Keep the elbows flexed. Do not move the arms back and forth through the water. Try to remove all residual soap because it can harbor debris and also make gloving more difficult. Proceed to the operating room. Enter by pushing the door open with your back, keeping the elbows flexed. Proceed to drying, gowning, and gloving. Be sure to dry hands well, as gloves are difficult to apply when there's moisture, and moist environments are a breeding ground for bacteria. Some institutions have a scrubless, alcohol-based antiseptic solution for use in between cases.